It's Tuesday, February 16th, 2016. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights tonight, Hell Divers. Let's do this. So we mentioned a bunch of times that we've been playing a giant multiplayer robot game of Civ 5. We're, what, like 70 turns in now? I don't know how many turns it? it is, but I need some fucking money. Uh, if you need my money, caravan, my caravan was doing great, and then a barbarian just went boop. You got to protect that shit. You've got you've got caravans going off into like I unprotected barbarian. It lands. was not unprotected barbarian lands. It was lands that I had presumed were perfectly safe, and then a barbarian just was like whoop. Here uh, I yeah, am. Yeah, Scott, I got scouts like patrolling my trade routes to make sure barbarians don't. I don't have enough there. shit for that. Also, I don't necessarily because there's trust so many fucking barbarians in the way. I was constant. All my guys were on the barbarians behind my territory, but my caravan went in the other direction well that's your problem but i can't that's where the only the city that i was sending it to was right send there. it to a different city there was no other city to send it to because there's no one fucking near me then send it to your own city and you get a huge boost instead of money it was i needed more monies than that to con to make up for my debts because i built so many good buildings that's with high maintenance you built too much shit you know what you should do but i had good shit if you can, good shit, good. If you can send a guy near me, I will gladly pay you money for a luxury. I'm resource. on a worthless island. <laughs> How am I gonna send a guy to you? Uh, completely on an island. I mean, I can't. Is there I shallows can't. that get across? Is I, your science so pathetic that you can't go into the shallows yet? Can you embark? I can. Uh, I would need to uh, build something. Just a scout. Just send a scout yeah. down. Uh, meanwhile, by the time I build the thing, uh, you know. What's going to happen to my monies? My coffers are going to be empty. Well, don't you trade with Lisa? <laughs> I'm sure. on the other side of the barbarians. Do you have diplomatic relations? Uh, no. You never bumped into her so you can I've, see her in the diplomatic thing? Uh, maybe I can, but she's not going to just give me fucking money. Well, trade her something. That's how diplomacy <laughs> works. Like, yo, I'll give you I this can't city. Trade, I'm going to trade with someone who's like right there. That, why not? Who's like the most powerful person in the game, and I'm like the last most powerful. If you're the last most powerful, you should ally with the first most powerful for a little while to suck resources out no, of her. <laughs> and why would you do that? Because she'll treat you like a toady, or yeah. she'll give you. She's probably got. You know what? Also, then how come? How did she have money? That's not understand. You're in the same uh, situation. Scott, I got a shit ton of money. How did you get all the money from? Uh, I got spices all over up in. How did you get? How did you turn them into money? Uh, spices, if you work them, give you like three gold just f on the land. Yeah, I have some spaces like that, but it still doesn't add up to as much money as it costs me every turn. How many militaries do you have? Uh, pretty, lar pretty large military, Yeah, actually. I had to disband a military because I couldn't afford it. I may have a trade agreement where I'm giving someone a luxury resource in return for like seven gold a m of turn. Oh, well, that matters a lot. Yeah, so... But I'm not near anyone to make a trade with. In fact, I'm going to build my fourth city real soon, I think. I don't even have a third city because I can't make a settler because I'm too busy trying to build a replacement caravan. Uh, it sounds like civilization... Tell you what, Scott, if you can reach me and make diplomatic relations... I want to see like exactly what you had each city building each turn that allowed you to be more so productive. In I'll tell you what, one thing that I did different, probably, is that I placed my cities real well. I placed my cities real well. And I rushed culture so I could max out liberty. I mean, I got as much culture as I could. But yeah, you traditioned. Uh, Tradition sucks. All right. That's part of it. What did you get? Liberty. All liberty. I also got liberty. In fact, I'm almost done with liberty. I only have like one liberty. What? Did you, did you build like monuments or amphitheaters? I built. I can't build an amphitheater yet. I built monuments. Uh, in every city as soon as you started the city? Uh yeah, all right. So you so you built a monument. Every city you founded, the first yes, thing you built all was a two, monument. all two of them. And you built a monument both immediately. Yeah. And well, liberty gives you makes uh, monuments give you more liberty or give you more culture among other things. Well, I mean, I spent all my time fighting barbarians. How many barbarians did you have to fight? Uh, I've destroyed like nine encampments. I've only seen like three encampments. If I could, I actually have a military now. If another encampment appeared, I could kill it and get money. Yeah, encampments keep spawning because there's this job. Me and Alex have this truce, so there's an area between us where there's no settlement. There is no encampment spawning. And the I problem is, fucking barbarians keep spawning in this area. So I, I kill. Can't send I, I invested in this military to kill barbarians. I killed them all, and no new ones are showing up except for the one that popped out of nowhere to so kill my. 
we'll caravan. take over like a city state or the rest just of the Just conquer era. it? Yeah, just fucking go. But that's going to hurt me if I conquer it. It's Why? It's going to bring me all kinds of unhappiness and trouble. Not that much. Plus, puppeted cities give that... you their science and their production and everything. Aren't they going to cost me a whole bunch? Uh, Every time I conquer something when I play Civ, it just hurts me. It's always good for you unless you really overstep Every yourself. time in the history of Civ I've conquered something, it's been like, oh, you conquered something. All right, yeah, now there's a bunch of people who hate you and your happiness is negative 10 and it costs you a million dollars to maintain their shit and they suck. Yeah, and that goes down rapidly and then mm. after a few turns it's making money again. I've never had that. Happen. Also puppet them and they don't increase the cost of the next social policy. Never had this happen. The social policies only get more expensive if you found or take cities and make them legit cities. Uh, maybe you, I'll just give all my stuff to Lisa so she wins and be a troll if I can't win. Why don't you give it to me? Because you're on the other side of the map. Fuck you. Why don't you give it to Scott Johnson Also, or if it's a vote who wins the game, I'm not voting for you. Well, why not vote for me? Because right now Lisa's winning. Uh, okay. She can win. It'd be even done even faster. <laughs> the <laughs> thing is, you being done doesn't matter. You, why, don't you, why don't you just give your, each of your cities to a different person? My lands are real valuable. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. Actually. Apparently, they don't make any money. You should, they make, I have mad uh, sugars and shit. It just doesn't make enough money for some reason. I don't know where you got this extra monies from. So, Scott, how many buildings are in your capital? Buildings? I don't even know. Uh, okay, because I have like two buildings. Uh, I have way more than two buildings. Yeah, buildings I got a cost a lot of money. I got to like a library and, a, and all kinds of good stuff. And I had to, I had to get rid of my reli- I built a religious building just to get the Pantheon, but then I had to sell it off to get the money's back. You know. Uh, I've never sold a building. Selling a building is like a, you've already lost. I had no monies. How'd you I- run out of money? Did you Because I had a caravan to keep my coffers in the plus, and then the caravan got killed and it became minus. How much the, minus? It's still you should have like eighty or ninety gold backup just hanging I out. I killed a barbarian camp to, and that gave me enough money, but then after five turns that money was gone because it was negative every single turn. All right, did you it was build, like negative five? Did you build a whole bunch of like roads and improvements and shit everywhere? Because each one of those costs a like gold to maintain. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of them. Do, do you have more than you're using? Uh, no, I'm using every single one. You're literally using every one of those improvements. Yep. Uh huh. Like a mad population. I'm using every improvement. In fact, I'm building an improvement so I can use it because I've got more pop, mo- alive populations on unimproved hexes. Uh, did you rejigger your cities to produce gold instead of production? Yes, they've been producing maximum gold since they've been, you know. Buried. I. If you log into your game and let me look at your cities, I can. I will consult for you. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to quit the game anyways. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll, I can show you what you did right now. I'll show you my cities. Except I can't. I don't want to show you where my military is because I might be doing something with it soon. You're going to attack me across the water? No, I'm not attacking you, but I still like, keep my secrets close. <laughs> okay. Someone's fucked in the, uh, in the nearing like 10 or 20 turns. Well, people near rim. Go watch out. So anyway, in the news... Street Fighter V came out, and it's shocking how little I cared after I realized that it was out. Well, I mean, I saw it at PAX a few times, and I'm like, oh, it's more Street Fighter. I played Street Fighter Four a bunch. That'll hold me over to, like, Street Fighter Six or something. Yeah. I guess I just... Seven, I got... seven maybe? Seven will be a probably exciting one. I enjoy fighting games. I even have, like, a Mad Cat's, like, awesome fighting stick. I just... I don't have time for that anymore in my old age. Like, I don't play Street Fighter-ish games enough to be good at them. Mm-hmm. And the only fighting games I'm good at that exist still are like Soul Calibur style. So yeah, it's like other people don't want to play the high skill cap games that we're playing because they don't have time for those. They're playing fighting games or RTSs, and then it's like, well, we don't want to, you know, we want to play, play those other high skill. We want to play low skill cap RTSs and fighting games and high skill cap R games. Which is interesting because remember, most people who are very good at very high skill cap games specialize in those games and do not play many other games. Mm-hmm. Which is true for us too in that realm. But it's like in Omegathon, if there was both an RTS and DDR in the same Omegathon, the Venn diagram of people who are very skilled at both is probably close to zero. Mm, yeah, probably. But there's a problem with Street Fighter V, and it seems weird. I didn't dig into this too deeply. Yeah, this sounds but, suspicious. I think it's overblown. Whatever you're saying is probably inaccurate in many ways. Uh, not really. So, because you, we ran into this, and we complained about it in the previous show, or a, pre- a previous Tuesday show, mm-hmm. where we, ha- we were at a party, and there were two PS4s in two different rooms at the party, and a bunch of controllers, and every time we wanted to play, like, Towerfall or something, you had to fucking sit there and log every controller in as a guest one by one. And if someone was logged in with a game, 
game and they'd played the game and then they started playing a game on a different PS4, it would just like kick the game out and crash it and all, all these weird problems because the, it sort of assumes that everyone just has their own controller all the time forever and I guess brings the controller with them and always has an account and logs in even for like local throwaway multiplayer. But all that aside, that was a problem that existed and we were annoyed by, but it wasn't a deal breaker. That seems to be what's causing the first of the controller problems with Street Fighter V. Because apparently, you need a modern controller or it won't work. Is so that if, to prevent cheating? Because people like making their own controllers? Or... It appears that if you have a controller, which my, I, I checked, it looks like my fighting stick would not work. And you want to use it in the PS4, you have to log in with the DualShock 4 controller shit, which isn't in the old fight sticks. So to make that controller work, you have to go through all these menus and go to, like, legacy controller authentication. And then you have to set up your legacy controller. And then you have to plug in a regular controller and use, like, a regular DualShock 4, PlayStation, whatever controller, and use that to log in and all this nonsense. So just play on X-Bone or PC. So if you play on an X-Bone, I believe it's fine because Xbox doesn't have as much of this nonsense. In fact, none well, of the I guess articles... they're not using the controller for the nonsense, right? Yeah. But if you're on the PC, it's also a problem. What do you mean? So, quote... As for PC, Street Fighter V natively supports a number of devices, but those without X input functionality will not work until a promised future patch. Oh, okay. So they just they pretty much only coded in support for certain controllers and they didn't support, you know, they only basically worked with the X input API for direct X. Yep. So if your controller is like using the old I mean, that's almost any controller you're gonna use is gonna use X input, right? You'd have to get like some old busted like you know uh, Thrustmaster flight stick thing, yep. you know that uses like the the Windows like set up your analog controller thing so, to not work with that. The uh, from what I can so that gather, that's not a real issue. No one's using a non X. Uh, so from controller. what I can gather, more people are than you'd think because a lot of people have custom or old fighting sticks that are super awesome that might have art or whatever on them. And those don't work anymore. I mean, it had to be a pretty old fight. Like, because I mean, our it, well, it was widespread enough of a problem. The fighting stick we have is an Xbox 360 controller. It's using yeah. X input, so it has to be even older than that. Yep. But and I and I'm saying that while I agree with you, there's enough people bitching on the internet that I guess there must be a community of people who have older controllers. I that guess don't if do you this. made your own controller, right, and you got a con you got you know the circuit board in your controller well, was yeah, not like, so, just an Xbox 360 controller that you opened up. Well, like so, me and Scott back in the day would, when we played Dance Dance Revolution, we'd buy these bootleg like dance mats, mm -hmm. and when they finally died, it was always because the well, dance they, those mat are just PlayStation controllers. <laughs> yeah, the dance mat was shitty. So when I made a hard DDR pad, I just took the circuit board out of the front of one of those things and wired it up to my hard pad. Which and is a it, it's a PS1 controller. And it totally worked. Of course, why not? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, people are complaining about this. So apparently there's a workaround, but the workaround adds so much input lag that you can't actually play Street Fighter. Mm. Some people were saying use Joy to Key. And Fuck you, to, Joy to Key. Yeah, to paraphrase Daryl Surratt, Joy to Key is like the last ditch effort of Mad Men. Yeah. <laughs> like that is, like, Joy to Key is one step before sniffing cocaine out of a gutter. I never use Joy to Key. I never will. Anyone who uses it, you're If the solution to your problem use... is Joy to Key, your problem is not worth solving. That's right. And the game was badly written <laughs> by an advisor. I've played a lot of games. I've never needed to use Joy to Key. I played a lot of games that would have needed it, and I decided just to not use a controller. Mm -hmm. Just use the key. Yeah. So you got any news? Uh, it's only I couldn't find a lot of gaming news, so I found this tiny news. So today, there's a big Steam sale. It's not really a big Steam sale like all of Steam. It's a Steam sale on this one bundle of games, the Make War Not Love 3 oh. Prize 1 No Cost from Sega. So you get, for $0... <laughs> Golden Axe, the original, the good Whoa. one. It's not a great game, but I'd play it for $0. Well, I mean, it's a it's a game you just emulate, but it's $3 Golden Axe. Yeah. But it's $0 because, you know, this bundle. A bunch of, like, hey, hell yeah rabbit something game that I never heard of. Oh, Je hell yeah rabbit? Yeah, the big deal, Jet Set Radio is, is in this, and you get it for $0. Wow, I forgot Jet Set Radio existed. And then a Sega Classics thing. So you get all these things together for $0. So if you have a Steam account, just make sure you click on this to get the games for $0. 
but the question is why this make love make war not love prize bundle one number three. So do thing, you know why or are you asking? Everyone's presuming that Sega is doing this for some sort of promotion of something coming soon that we're not sure of. So like there's going to be some sort of something from Sega coming soon that will be hot. Sounds about right. I mean, like if I was going to make a modern Rampart, I would definitely re-release the old Rampart for free on PCs. Mm -hmm. So I got one tiny news too, because as you know, full disclosure, I'm associated with Date Naito. They make visual novels. So, you know, ethics and game journalism or whatever. But one of our games, We Know the Devil, is a pretty cool game. And... One of the shicks is that it was going to be for sale for $6.66. Ha <laughs> ha, Satan. And because of reasons, this was literally impossible to do on Steam. Well, I mean, you can make it 6 dollars everywhere else. Uh, yeah, but on Steam, you could not make it $6.63. It ended up being six sixty three. dollars and that was as close as they could get it. Okay, so wait a second. So Steam is putting restrictions on the price you can set for there a game. There are prices you can set, like at tiers, and you don't, you can't go between those. Okay, so here's the question. If you're going to make tiers, why wouldn't they be something logical like every 50 cent or every 25 cent or, you know, something like that? Why would you even allow 662 wouldn't so, you just only allow six fifty, six ninety nine, seven fifty, seven ninety nine? So it was going to be sold for six. Maybe throw in seven twenty five and seven forty. When it went live on Steam, it ended up being seven ninety nine because that was the only price they could set. So a seventeen percent discount was used to get it as close to six sixty six as possible. Oh, you can set percent discounts to adjust. Yeah, the price. so seven ninety nine oh. with a seventeen percent discount got it to six sixty three, which is real close to the number that was actually the number of the beast in old documents, and also kind of close to six sixty six. Uh huh. So, uh, I was why gonna... not just set it to nine ninety nine? So that you can be an upside down mark of the beast. Because then it costs a lot more money. Well, but I mean, any you know, yeah. ste Steam premium price. So uh, I was I was gonna talk about this in more detail, but literally between when I realized what was going on and when I we came home to do the show, uh, there's an article on Kotaku from 3:10 p.m. today talking about this. So there has to be a, maybe some other way, right? Like if you gave it. What if the price is like twelve? What you know? You set it fifty percent discount, right? I feel like if you increase the percent discount, you could make a really high price and get it to six sixty six. Well, so I'm pretty sure the reasons Steam does this kind of thing there's a, there's a bunch of like back end business reasons. Like for example, one of the really annoying things of like the Google Play Store or I don't know Amazon is that you'll see things for sale for like five dollars and one cent, four dollars and nine to six cents because they're trying because they're trying to like game each other and appear at different parts in the listings and you know show like shave a penny off the price but then add a penny to the shipping and all sorts of like weird arbitrage engineering nonsense mm. uh also it's probably more efficient to have pricing tiers and like standard discounts and standard stuff and pretty sure this is the only game in history where someone noticed and cared mm. I think that's the end of it. I don't Someone know. If I, if I was cared. selling Doom, I would sell it for six. six. <laughs> yeah, so we need John Carmack and uh, John Romero. They're not working on the new Doom. I'm not saying they are, but I'm saying we need their voices to advocate that 666 needs to be an available but I think, tier. But I think Doom will cost you 66, 66. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or 66, 60 actually would be better, I think. 69, 69. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's real close to our old Wi Fi password. You could have also given them a discount, make it cost 420. And uh, also, one of the other games, Hustle Cat, where you can date uh, cats that turn into cute people, is on Steam Greenlight, but hasn't made it over the line yet. So, uh, go click on what it. What happens if it makes it over the line? Then you can buy it on Steam. Oh, so it's already done? You just can't buy it until it, it's... It's not done, but it's going to be for sale soon, but it can't be for sale on Steam. Then how come you can sell the devil game on steam because it got over the list so the devil game had a demographic that was very into it and got a greenlit oh, way early also that game is just out you can just buy it uh, but the cat game needs help to get over the line the Otherwise, cat game i don't think enough people you realize won't be able to pay 662 for the cat game you'll only be able to pay 662 for the devil game yep you'll have to buy the cat game from somewhere else it's not steam yes unless more people click yes uh, on this thing okay and that's why... Oh, there are, however, right now, on it, 69 comments. 
All right. <laughs> Sounds good. But anyway, things of the day. If you know me at all, in fact, I see that Bustin thing just like looking at me as the first <laughs> recommended video. Bustin, Bustin, <laughs> Bustin. Makes me feel good. Bustin. Neil Cicerega is the avatar of all the good parts of internet culture. Like, you know, in fantasy worlds, like the god of whatever. We have sung his praises enough times. Yeah. All you need to know is that there is a person named Neil Cicerega, and they're the person who has made all the things. Yeah, like name 10 weird internet things. The creative genius of perhaps the half a generation younger than us. Yeah, I'll put it this way. Yeah, he's younger than us. Yeah. But name like 10 popular, well-known, weird internet meme things. He's made half of them, Yeah, probably. like for real. Yeah. And he made an opus. So this is 21 minutes long. It is basically an entire TV episode titled Computer Fighters. Mm -hmm. Just watch it. Like, don't. It, just watch you it. You stole my thing of the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who backs his Patreon? This is, the, I, this is the best thing that I've seen on the internet in weeks. It is the best thing mm. I've seen on the internet, other than that suicide shower head that I'm going to talk about next week. Okay. But... The production values on this thing are pretty off the hook and independently. If you are around... There's like this all set of all-star people helping out, and it's like, oh, just he needed the help. Yeah, okay, yeah. If you're between 28... That's the person who needs the help from all these geniuses, the genius himself, sure. If you're between 28 and 38 years old, this is going to hit real close to home in a lot of ways. <laughs> all right, so I had to go to a backup thing of the day. So this is a YouTube video called Bolt for Brilliance, and in this video... Uh, a man bolts for brilliance. <laughs> 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 I don't know how much more I should talk about it, but I guess I will. So you know how at sporting events there is all, there's the old, especially soccer, especially in Europe, there is yep. the the streaker. Yep, you know? yep. They I'm take it of off. That. They run across the field. They I'm, get... I'm pulling up the video. I'm just gonna watch it while you're talking. This is the full day in the life of the man who bolts for brilliance. It begins with you know <laughs> his, you know before even going to the stadium, you know the preparations and stuff. Oh, this already looks real good. And then, uh, you know, climax with, you know, the event. All right. So now you know what it's like to be a day in the life of a person with this occupation. What goes through their minds, why they're doing this, how they get it done. This is, this, I don't even have the sound on. This actually looks really great. Proper, proper techniques. <laughs> he's like, he's ready. Like, he's got this really determined look on his face. All right. You're almost at the really the best part. When he actually does it? Yeah. Just yeah I see him, I see him here, queuing here, up. This, this is the best part. Here it comes. Okay, so he's he's queuing up his thing. Yep. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the best part is the guy in yellow who goes like that. Oh, oh. <laughs> is he flicking everybody? Oh, he's waving. <laughs> the run. I, I feel like if I watch the beginning of the video more, he practiced that run, the floppy arm thing he's doing. <laughs> this is a pretty good thing of the day. All right, there you go. <clears throat> and the meta moment. We're going to do a new book club soon because... Nine books into the Wheel of Time. Whoa. I'm not getting a little bored with it. <laughs> I made it to five and, oh, I guess four and a quarter. I am almost done with book nine. I got to wow. tell you, uh, I started skimming. <laughs> because, <laughs> but then I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just read the spoilers because I kind of want to know like what the deal is with everything. I'll so just, I started. Oh, tell me. Yeah, I started trying to read some spoilers. The spoilers are so dense that I might as well just fucking read the book. Like, <laughs> Here's I, the cliff note. It's bigger than the book. Yeah, like it's I like started, our Utena video. Like the Othrod, right? It's longer right? than the Utena episode. Like remember the Othrod thing? So yes. now there's like four Othrods like all over the place. People are fucking using them for everything, like all the time. Um, and apparently they learned that the Othrod has side effects. And I tried to learn what the deal why was Why would you want to make so many oaths? Uh, maybe to find the Black Aja. Okay. Yeah, maybe to be like, yo, swear that you're not black as shot. Oh, you won't? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Also, the Othrods are real bad news. <laughs> like, real bad news. Did you find anything about the snake people or the... No. So, so the, here's what I got. In the beginning of, I think, book eight, or mm -hmm. might have been book nine, there's a scene way in the mountains with a bunch of people you've never heard of who are all like kings of whatever. Ooh, and my kind of scene. One of them has a logo on his thing. Of the snake people? No, of the fox head. Okay. And then it, it cut away from them, and now it's been like two books, and they haven't come back. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those are my people. <laughs> that is literally as close as I've gotten to them. So I might pick a different book club book, 
Part, partly because I got some travel to London and Paris coming up in a few months, so I'll have an airplane ride or four to uh, read some books. But most important, this weekend, this weekend, well, as in this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be at MAGFest. Uh, oh, I'm real excited about this. This MAGFest, I mean... <laughs> This is the, this is serious business. Like everyone is going to be there. Yeah, one there's, we skipped the last Magfest. Well, because so, Pack South is the same time. Yeah, and so as a result, like I just realized that there's been a long it's been a long time since I've been to a Magfest, and I remembered but, how much I love Magfest. This Magfest, like everyone is going. Our Google Hangout already has like thirty people. Yeah, in we're it. gonna need like multiple separate Google Hangouts to manage these people. Yeah, this shit is going down hard, right? Uh, We've I, already planned a four a.m. DDR party that I was kind of jokingly proposing and a bunch of people were you like you just yes. keep saying it over and over again because people because people keep responding to me like yes yes <laughs> let's do it all right so what uh, panels are we doing at this mag so fest? we have six panels at this mag fest that's too many panels i want to spend more time mag fest less time panel you're only on five of them though and i'm that's only still on- no one- you're on you're on four of them i think okay it's it's better so thursday 5 30 p.m esports it's a panel about esports am i on that one yes uh Thursday, whatever. All right. Friday is our big day. We front loaded. So Friday, we got designing game rules, mm-hmm. Atari game design. Uh, if you saw us do those at Pack South, basically the same. You don't need to go. Mm-hmm. And the far future of gaming, which Scott does not have to be on. All right, yeah. Gonna Saturday, party it up. All things CCG, LCG, TCG. I guess I got to be on that because it was my idea, even yep. though I contributed nothing to it, other than saying, "Hey, does anyone want to talk about this?" That's literally all I said. Literally. I think there's gonna be, there's someone's got some. Slides. I was like, I said, "Hey, does anyone? I play Netrunner a lot. Does anyone want to do a panel about like card games and shit?" And that's paraphrasing, but that's all I said. Yep. And then now the panel's on the schedule. Yep, it'll have it's gonna happen. <laughs> and I guess I'm my name is on it. And then over overly complicated board games. Phase one, which Scott does not have to be on. Okay, good. I don't so, want to play any ASL. I was only joking about that. Six <laughs> panels, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and other than that, we're pretty much going to be in the arcade or in tabletop or in a private room playing Eclipse. That's right. <laughs> so come say hi. This is one of the few cons where you can easily find us and hang out for a while. Yeah, there isn't like a super big concert I want to go to, but there were some concerts I kind I didn't want to go to right like there was you know this video game DJ battles always good. I think I'm gonna some, wander into there was concerts. some mighty number no. nine tribute something and there was yep. some right. It's like there's some stuff on there, but it wasn't like the two times ago that I went to Magfest where Streets of Rage guy was there or when Machine Supremacy was there the time we went and then the time we didn't go. So. I think I Fight Dragons is doing some stuff. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. So Magfest like. If you're well, if you're not going, I mean, I don't know if it's sold Take, out. It's not sold out, but it's going to be hard to get a hotel that's close. Yeah. In fact, I don't know. I guess you could get a hotel far away and drive in. A lot of people are driving in. Like our friend George isn't it even also, staying in a hotel. It, it also might be close to sold out, right? So you might have issues uh, if you try to like show up and buy a ticket. It could be sold out by the time you get there. Yeah, but for real, the clock is ringing. It's Magfest time. And then we got pretty much nothing until like Zenkai Con and PAX East. Mm. So. So uh, yesterday, actually, we were going to do a game day, and I had a little bit of alien that I was fighting off. So Scott was like, well, here, why don't we play online well, games? Well, me and, you know, me and Chris are going to come over here and play some table, serious tabletops, but then, you know, you didn't commit, and then it's like, well, you know, it's really snowy and shitty. Uh, yeah, no, the, no one wants to leave their apartment. Let's- I would have been totally up for it, except I was, you know that feeling where you're almost sick? Mm-hmm. And one, I, if I was going to get sick, I couldn't risk getting other people sick before MAGFAS. Right. So and two, I needed to make sure I recovered, which I appear to have. So I'm like, hey, let's play a Vigi game. So actually, we found that this site that's like still working on some like online thing where you can play board games. And we played some uh, Rainer Kinesia Samurai, which I remember how to play now. That game's okay. Oh, that's the one with the, the Buddhas, Buddhas, the hi hats. Yeah. They changed it to Buddhas helmets and or Gates helmets and rice bowls instead. No more Buddhas. Uh, well, I mean, the gate is a to a Buddhist temple, right? Oh, okay, so, I guess that. yeah, but it's that's any- the second best game named Shogun. Yeah, uh, but anyway, we played we, uh, me Samurai. <laughs> Not sure. Any- I don't know. Whatever. No, it was Shogun. It is got it? renamed Samurai Swords, and then oh, renamed right, right, right. Ikusa. Right. Sh- anyway, so you know, we're just looking for a game to play online, and we're sort of. It's hard to actually find uh, games that are a good. <laughs> uh, At least and, good enough, right? And that you can play online on a PC. With some sort of co-op situation, right? There's a lot of local co-op, a lot of local multiplayer, a lot of more than two people games. 
but it's hard to find two people games. So we're just going through Steam looking for them. And it's like we've already played like Portal 2 co-op, and there's not like how many FPSs are there that we can find that are co-op, right? That would be fun, but there's not a lot of them. So uh, we come across this one called Helldivers, and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting, you know. Uh, it's a it's sort of like a Robotron shooter. That's always good for some co-op action. That's all Scott told me about it, so I just joined it. I didn't know that. anything about it. I just saw, oh, look, it's a Robotron game. It costs 20 bucks, which is, I would rather wait for a Steam sale. But you know what? Fuck it. It's really cold out, and I got nothing to do. Let's just do this. Uh, we'll do an episode on it, even if it sucks. It'll you know we'll get our twenty bucks worth. Yeah. Plus, there's that Steam refund policy. Yeah. Uh, can always return it real quick if it's really bad. Yep. So you and Chris played for a little while. We while played for I a little was... while while Rim got his shit together. Well, because I was in the middle of uploading actually the archival footage from Pack South to Amazon Cloud Drive. Oh, give my SD card back. Oh yeah, here. Okay. Uh, so SD card. Anyway, so we get this game. So here's what I learned about this game. First of all, it's made by the people in Magica. So they have experience with the sort of twin stick action, you know, of that Magica was, right? So they're good at this. Uh, two, I learned from Wikipedia, this game was actually a PS, a PlayStation game that was released in March of 2015. So it's like yeah. a, it's a year old, but it wasn't put on Steam until December 2015. So it was actually a really new Steam game, and you could only play it on Steam. You don't play with the PlayStation people. Thank God. Right. <laughs> so you're all, you know, it's only Steam people when you play with Steam. So it's a, a Robotron shooter, and the story is there's this super Starship Earth. Troopers. Right. The story is Starship Troopers. It's Super Earth. You're on <laughs> and Super Democracy. <laughs> you're from Super Earth, and you're basically evil. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the game doesn't even, like, the, the, the propaganda video that plays in the beginning is like, hey, we're evil. Join then, the Helldivers, go to some other planet, and fuck it up, and bring them managed democracy. The new, when you first start the game, after you do the tutorial, I love how the tutorial is like, like, it's like, take, pick up your gun and shoot that target. You shoot it once, and it's like, you are now a firearms expert. Move on to the next training. It's like, you are now a grenade expert. Right, and then it gets you into the, the first NPC I talked to in the whole game. The guy who salutes you in the bottom right just said, "Why is our logo a skull?" <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so yeah, um, so there's three different evil alien races. There's the aliens, the cyborgs, and the one I forget. I forget bugs. No, uh, bugs, cyborgs, and I don't know. I've only ever seen bugs. Yeah, because we only chose bug levels. Yeah. Right? So you go and choose, you know, some mission based on its difficulty. Uh, and you have to do certain, you know, objectives and then, you know, evac the planet, you know, after you um, do whatever missions there are. And then you succeed in a certain number of missions per planet. And once you do all the missions on the planet, you succeeded at that planet. And now you can go do another planet somewhere. Uh, and you bring with you one to four hell divers, you and up to three other people. Could be random internet people, could be your friends, could be you alone, you don't know, whatever. Yep. Uh, and you do these missions. And at first, you start playing the game, and it seems like way too easy. Like the easiest missions are baby missions. Like you shoot one thing and you just do it, it's done, right? But the difficulty gets up pretty high. And then and it, I knew it was good because I was yelling so much that Emily was like, uh, simmer down. Right. And it seemed, you know, I started playing the game a bunch and it really felt like there wasn't a lot of variation. Like I was getting a little bored. I was like, hey, we've been shooting the same bugs and doing the same objectives. This is getting kind of old fast, right? Can we, is there any variation here? What's going on? So the thing is, yeah, there's actually a shit ton of variation that it just, you don't see it until you like get deep into it. Like the depth is like way deep, but you can't like see the bottom of the pool. You just got to keep swimming slower, like inch by inch. Like when first we thought like, let's just drop right on the objectives. And then that started to not work. So yeah. we had to like plan our routes. And it's like, like with such small amounts of stuff, like so few weapons and so few different enemies, like the amount of thinking that had to go into everything and like, you know, the gameplay variation we had to get into was actually like, whoa. So the way it actually plays, the game that it is closest to, and this might sound strange, but I'm going to stick by this, is the original Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, it's, it feels it's definitely closest to because that. Because that game started out like, all right, just hit the bad guys, whatever. But 
as you got deep and toward the end of the original Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, you started figuring out how to do those like really complicated spell combos. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, the game was like a squad of of like Scott doing stuff while me and Katsu are literally like coordinating with each other with code words to figure out like what attacks to do to make sure we time everything, coordinate everything right. And we started having to act like a really pro unit. And this game's the same way. Like we sort of had this rollout phase where like we'd get our shit together and I'd roll out a turret and you guys would do whatever you were doing and then we'd right. go. The key is th- there's, there's, there's three keys that make this happen, right? Key number one is they don't let you go off the screen from your other people. So if one person's going up and I was going down, you just get killed doing that. Because that person on top will get killed by something that's off screen to the top that you can't see. And then the person at the bottom will get killed by something off the bottom of the screen that you can't see because you were trying to split up. And the camera won't zoom out after a certain point, and you'll just be screwed. Yep. Right? So that makes like Crystal Chronicles with the bucket where you have to stay together. Right? Number two, friendly fire is serious shit. Yep. Like if you even shoot your teammate once, they dead. Like, you know, most games like this, like you can throw down a turret and it shoots the bad guys automatically. The turret in this game is utterly ridiculously powerful it's also I, really stupid and will shoot you if you are between it and the bad guy there was a moment where i literally threw t- i had two turrets on either side of me and then a bug like a camouflage bug jumped on top of me and the two turrets i see him spinning around and i'm like welp <laughs> so yeah the turrets will sh- you know there, there are many many things like that. for example there are mechs you didn't see the mechs because I, pl- I haven't I, seen any mechs. i played online yeah there's a lot of stuff you didn't see yeah uh and it's like yeah if you're piloting the mech you can just step on people by accident who aren't in the mech well you can call down i remember there was a scott just, uh, so chris and i died and scott was running away and he like threw down the thing to call in reinforcements basically to respawn yeah us. you can respawn your friends just by throwing this th- object but you so, have to like get to a place to do it so then you got a, you got like attacked by some other guy and he pushed you back and then the respawn thing fell from the sky on top of you killing, killing you it, yep Exactly. Or like the med, like the chopper, like at the end There's you have to get to the There's all these chopper. things that you can call for to come help you, stratagems, and you basically throw an object as a stratagem, and then, you know, the hell divers in the sky drop something, and it lands in the spot that you threw the stratagem. Now, there's two great aspects there. One, the stratagems and the weapons and everything have an upgrade tech tree, mm-hmm. which is fun. And two, to actually deploy them, it's Sabin-style Final Fantasy VI, like left, left, right, left, up, round, down, left, right. Yep. It's like doing a blitz. Yeah. So, like, some of the objectives are like that, too. So, like, to, to arm the nuke, you got to go over and be like, bup, 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 while everyone else is doing their shit. So, actually, we were using the hell bombs to blo- to do that mission where you blow up the nests. Yep. Uh, people I played with just had actual nukes and just called them in and blew up the nests immediately without having to activate some stupid thing. Oh. Yeah. So, there is just better stuff, right, that you can get. Would and- the airstrike do it? Uh, I mean, there are certain things that can damage the nest because they're strong enough and certain things that can't. I think they have tank-level armor. So actually, my uh, my uh, recoilless rifle could have destroyed them if we shot them enough times. Oh. And then, yeah, like talking about the depth. So Scott had the recoilless rifle. Which is a really fun weapon. I, like, I, I, once I figured out how to use it, I was way into it because basically anytime a really big bad guy appears, it really sucks to kill it, especially because ammo is so limited. But if the recoilless rifle is like the special thing, it's actually a stratagem that you call down and then pick up. You shoot it once, and if you hit them dead on, they dead. And I got really good at that. And it felt really good, because we'd be, like, fighting, and suddenly, like, Chris would yell, Big one coming in! And then you see it coming in. So I just switch that weapon, I aim, and I fire my one rocket, and boom, it's While dead. the two of us fall back and cover mm-hmm. Scott while he's aiming from all the little bugs that are coming in. Right, if I hit something... if I, And a lot of times, I would shoot it and hit something too close to myself and kill myself. <laughs> or, you know, something would get in the way and it wouldn't work. But mostly, I hit the bad guys with it. A lot then, of stuff, too, like the, like the medevac copter. Right. Like, coming down, like, so it'll... Re- Reloading the recoilless rifle is really slow, but I found I found out when playing with people online that you there's actually this supply pack that goes with it. So Rim picked up my supply pack once, and I was like, Rim, you took my stupid supply pack. How can I reload the stupid rifle now? Fuck you. Apparently, if Rim has a supply pack, there's a reason it's separate. He can help me reload the thing, and it would take much less time. That's real important. Yeah, we didn't know that. <laughs> So, so now that we know that, that's great. So take all the gameplay feels of Crystal Chronicles coupled with an upgrade tree that's more like a Deus Ex. Like, there's legit upgrade tree in there. Yeah, but it's all co-op. There's no PvP at all. It's always you and up to three other people fighting against the AI. Oh, I figured PvE. out what the SOS does, too. Oh, it calls people from the internet to come help you. It calls a rando into your game. Yeah, it's like, internet, come help us. So there's theoretically a persistent meta. Where as you level up, like you just get better. This is not a game that you would play forever. Because if once you've upgraded everything, 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're playing the same missions, you know, and eventually when you do the hell dive level missions, those are the hardest possible missions. If you've done enough of those and you've leveled up all the stuff, there's really not a reason to keep playing. And that is when you stop playing the game because it was only 20 bucks and right. you put like 60 hours into this But thing. whenever you complete a mission, you actually have community influence. So this actually boosts like the war effort in general with these points. So as the war effort progresses, eventually there's like a final mission, and then I think there's like another, you know, the game ends as a whole, and then there's another war that happens. So it's, they're like events, like it can go the other way. If you start, if the bugs start winning or whatever, like if one of the bad guys wins, then there's emergency missions that pop up, like right now, whoever's online, fucking get in here, and you have to defend a city. Yep. But those are like, it starts at two o'clock, like right the fuck now, mm -hmm. if you don't join, you miss out. Yeah, the stuff like that. So the only negative in this game that I found is that there's a lot of DLCs that cost money. Yeah. And those DLCs are not trivial. For example, there are all-terrain boots that you can buy uh, as a perk. and With real money, you can get these. You can't get them any other way, as far as I know. The all-terrain boots, they make it so you just walk in snow and water no problem. Oh, that's some bullshit. Right. But obviously, there's still a perk, so you'd have to get rid of like your laser sight or so, you know, because you only carry one perk. On I would you give up time. my laser sight for that. I'm just saying, for example, right? So there's certain things that cost money and are just better, but it's all co-op, and you can get really. I mean, like I'm doing, I'm perfectly happy with the game. You know, it's not like I'm competing, so I don't care if someone's well, better the thing. shit than this, me. Well, that's the thing. This is a game. If you want to enjoy it, it's I, like you, I, you know, it's like this pay to win games, and it's like there is pay to win, but it's like. You know, remember when I, I always remember Tycho wrote this thing when they talked about Diablo three having pay to get stuff, and it's like, who are you cheating? Satan himself, <laughs> <laughs> right? Who is who is the cheated party here? The yep. fucking bugs, right? But I for mean, real, <laughs> like I wouldn't recommend playing this game with a bunch of randos, though Scott did. Right. We'll so talk I about that. so after we played, uh, you know, with just us three and had a good time. Uh, even with our very, li you know, we we didn't even scratch the surface and had a great time. Yeah, the the, the amount of yelling was like yeah. there was a lot of like go 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 Scott recover. I'm recover, gonna play this when I get home after I eat. So I, I played some play I played some single player and I the single player was lame because if you get the difficulty to any reasonable level, you can't do it on your own. It's too hard. Yeah, right? I mean I'm sure you could get good enough to where you can do it on your own, but Godspeed to you <laughs> if you want to do these things on your own. So I said, all right, fine, I'll play the random internet people. So. Two ran this is only a sample size of two, but I played two games with random internet people. So the first one, it was the stereotypical people who are speaking in Chinese and have way higher level than me, but they also spoke English. So I'm playing with these people, and they were really good at the game. They knew what to do, right? I, you know, and I sort of was able to follow along and contribute and help without really bringing anyone down or anything, right? And everyone, like any, like. They were trying to help. Everyone is like just positive. There was not one shit cock at all, right? Everything was just A plus, let's go. Like we get to, the guy has mechs. He brought four mechs with him and was like four mech stratagems all at once. Everyone get a mech, let's go. Uh. Kind of situation, right? And like I picked up the recoilless rifle. The guy took the pack and he's like, yeah, I can reload this for you here. And then he was so good at reloading it for me. Like I would shoot a big bad guy with it. They all knew that I was doing it and like got out of the way. I didn't have to say like, "Hey, get out of the way, guys!" Like they were always out of the way anytime a big bad guy showed yeah. up. Yeah. And then every time I fired it, the next time I pulled it out to like reload it, went in a quiet time, it would already be reloaded. I'm like, "When did he reload this thing?" Right? Like he just reloaded it without me even knowing because like he's paying attention. And like so, I'm like, "Wow, these guys are really good." And so I played it. You know, that game eventually ended. Played another game with some other people. So here was the, a small bit of trolling. One guy. All four of his stratagems were mines. Oh, uh, mine, 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 mine. He mines just are put dangerous. he put the mines everywhere, and we kept dying on them. But we kept reviving ourselves. Like anytime anyone died, everyone, even the mine guy, would throw you know the reinforcement thing immediately. Like anytime I would throw the reinforcement thing, and I wasn't the last person alive, all the other remaining living players would also throw their reinforcement thing the same time that I threw it. Yeah. <laughs> It's so like if anyone died, it'd be like, reinforce, reinforce it, reinforce it. That's actually kind of bad news because then you can't reinforce again for 30, 60, or 90 seconds. Well, you're if you're going to play online with people, you need to upgrade your reinforcement thing to the maximum. Oh, yeah, because you read that etiquette guide. You know what? I'm not going to bow before I kill someone with a lightsaber either. Yeah, well, I mean, the other thing is I uh, I chose, once I got to the point where I was able to upgrade my recoilless rifle to have its own laser sight, I didn't need to use the laser sight perk anymore. 
So I was able to instead switch to the priority stratagem perk, which makes all my cooldowns faster. Oh. So that's way good. But the game shines most if you find some friends and just play with them. Like, play with your actual friends. Sure. And ignore all the other people on the internet. But I'm telling you, I played with two random internet groups, and they were both excellent. And in fact, that second group, right... I already knew at this point how the recoilless rifle worked with the, the friend helping you reload. Yep. I didn't even say anything. I just picked up the gun. Someone else, without me saying anything, picked up the supply pack. And in that second game with completely different people, same situation. It was just always reloaded whenever I looked at it. One guy, uh, you can only reload it if I have it out. One time I put it away too quickly to get the shotgun out. And the guy started stabbing me with his bayonet like, hey. <laughs> and I knew what he meant. And I pulled the gun out and immediately reloaded it. And I was like, all right. These people are it like, is interesting how little trolling there is, and I think it's because... like, you Well, this is only a sample size of two games, and there was a guy dropping mines on everyone. There's yeah. also a system of commendations and reporting, and uh, someone commended me. I was like, oh, wow. okay. But I didn't know. I, I read around, like, in Reddits and, like, forums. I was reading, like, the meta, like, the people of the, talking about this game, mm -hmm. and it seems like there is very little trolling in general. Yeah, I think it's because it's 100% co-op. Exactly. You, you gain nothing by trolling people, and they can all just quit and form a new game And they can also you. just report you and not commend you and, yeah, and make a new game. or Like, like that mine, the guy who dropped mines everywhere, after, like, the fourth time he did it in, like, a silly way that wasn't helpful, he got kicked. Yep. And it was like, all right. So I would say, but seriously, buy this game if you want a game like this. Or wait for a Steam sale. I don't uh -huh. think it's going anywhere. I mean, Magic is still around. But because of the nature of it is kind of repetitive, like you're going to play it out. It, you, I'm telling you, it's repetitive because it's deep, you know, and there's a lot of stuff to see, but it, you, you see very little new stuff over time. So like you have to keep playing and every mission you'll see a little bit of new stuff. It'll but eventually you're going to see most of the stuff. It's a lot of stuff that comes in in a trickle. People are saying 40 to 60 hours is about all it's worth if you play hard. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. And 20 bucks for that? It's like, you don't need to wait so for this that's why sale. I say it might be worth buying, because we're in it right now, and if you all get into it at the same time, it's going to be way more fun. Yep. Because I'll, I'll totally play it with you guys, because it is super fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I can name many of our personal friends who will be specifically into this game and once if there they is realize a Steam, it. if there is a Steam sale for this, oh, man, then it's totally worth it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's DLCs, which is bullshit, but it's pay to win. But who are you cheating, right? The bugs? <laughs> However, if you join my game and you bought some of that DLC, not going to be a fan. Why not? Eh, I feel like the, those missions with the water would have been a little bit easy if I could that just is, walk over the well, water. Well, I mean, that's just one example of a DLC, right? But for If they're all that equivalent power, that's a little bit much. I don't know, but like, let's say I bought a stratagem. I could drop it, and you can use it, even though I bought it. Yeah. Right? You know, there's also a lot of the DLCs are cosmetic, right? But, I mean, yeah, it's bullshit because it's 40 bucks to get, like, the mega DLC pack plus the game. It's 20 bucks to get the game with no DLCs. <laughs> uh, if there is, however, one day, like, if they had a deal, like, 10 bucks get every DLC to finish off your... I'd be like, uh, oh, maybe. See how much I'm still playing it, right? You know, because it would just add so much more freshness to the game. Every You know, every time you mix up, you know, you can get more gameplay out of it if you mix up which, you know, things you're using, right? Like, if I move away from my recoil is rifle strategy and decide I'm going to play more, like, jump boots and, you know, laser cannon strategy, right? Suddenly, it's like a different game because you have to play so differently. Play this game with us. Yeah. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. Patrons for this episode of Geek Nights, in order of the amount of money they give us, are...
Nicholas Brandau, Rebecca Dunn, John R. Nobbs II, Amanda Duchette, James David White, Christian Koontz, Jess, Sam Cordery, Mechanical Mind, William Eisenrose. You expected the next name to be yours, but it was me, Dio. Clinton Walton, MySteady.com, Phil Ulrich, Renee from New Zealand, Robert Lee, Ryan Perrin, Drew Openlander, Rare Lavelle, Brian Cedroni, Rochelle Montanona, Finn Eric Solverod, Rich Rochelle Montanona again, Kinetic Man, Aaron Cerise, Chris Midkiff, Chris Knox, he was a dark and stormy night, Daniel Redman, Chris Haddad, Doug Schneider, Sean Klein, Chris Reimer, and Thomas Hahn. I was tripped up by the two Rochelle Montanonas in there that caused me a moment of delay. Also, I'm speaking to you very close to the microphone in a perhaps smooth radio voice. As you probably saw, the Utena episode is finally up, and we actually have two recorded, so I'm working on the editing of the second one already. But that won't go up until I get the two panels we have left, possibly three, from PAX South that have to get on the channel. However, everything will be on hold until next week, because we are leaving for MAGFest early Thursday morning, where, as you saw, we have six panels. So, if you are listening to this still, the post- credit stinger the patreon extra content then be sure to come by and say hi at magfest we're not joking we're going to be playing ddr at like three or four in the morning at least one night and it's going to be amazing and now i leave you with something kind of weird good shit good shit that's some good shit right there right there if i do say so myself i say so that's what i'm talking about right there right there right there mm. Woo! good shit You know he's clean, oh don't you see?